Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, my friends. I was just thinking, um, you know, how I kind of feel like I'm just in your home sitting talking to you. And I hope you feel the same way that you're sitting here talking to me. We can have a good cup of tea and get acquainted. Thank you for being there. If you watched yesterday, I began an entire week with the missionary evangelist Bob Hoskins, who literally started preaching at the age of seven, never stopped, and he's been preaching for about 77 years now, a uh, very solid, solid ministry, and one that's taken a lot of different twists and turns. He mentioned that in the beginning he was a boy preacher preaching to adults, and then the Lord turned him into an adult preacher preaching to children. We'll be telling you about that all this week. It's one of the greatest ministries you'll ever hear about. But today, very exciting time in his life when he took his family to the Middle East. They settled in Beirut, Lebanon. And I'm telling you the exciting things that went, in, went on there. Try to think. He established a theological seminary in the Middle East and churches and then uh, had to kind of get out for the sake of his own life. You need to get out there. You've got to hear this story today. Uh, but before you can hear it and you can meet him, if you didn't meet him yesterday, I'm going to get with Stephanie and we're going to make something really interesting called creamy doubled mashed potatoes. And the reason it's double, it has sweet potatoes and white potatoes in it. And a real simple recipe because we wanted to give Bob Hoskins a lot of time. And so we haven't tried it. We're going to try it right in front of you, see how it is. But let me remind you again, we are viewer supported. And for us to be able to bring exciting ministries to you like this one, we need your support. You can use your credit card. That information is on your screen. That's 1-800-229-0059. And if you write to us, which we love getting your mail, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And thank you in advance. And also, I would like to mention that throughout this program, the website for Bob Hoskins is on the air, on the screen, and you might want to get to that awesome, awesome ministry. Okay. Hi. I'm trying not to make a she's, face. She's trying to <laughs> smile because we have a secret. She's one of those very few people in the world that does not like sweet potatoes. I don't. But I'm going to make this, and Arlene's going to try it, and it's going to be good. Did, did you have a bad experience with I sweet potatoes? I just have never liked them. I just, it goes peppers, sweet potatoes. Mm -hmm. Is that it, or are there more? Uh, that's, we'll probably stumble onto it. Maybe, but Well, yeah. we need to start yes. mixing this. Thank you. So all we have are, we have the, uh, we have red we, potatoes, we have sweet potatoes. Yes, we peeled them, we chopped them up, and we boiled them, mm -hmm. okay? And then we have bacon, which mm -hmm. is going to make it better, for mm -hmm. sure. And we have chicken broth, a half a cup of chicken broth, and then we have cream cheese. Cream cheese. They call um, it Philadelphia Creamy double mashed potatoes. Yeah. Um, i tell you what intrigued me a little bit with that chicken broth. Oh yeah, I think that's going to add a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're all home, we're all cooking more just trying to come up with different ideas for you because I get in a rut and I make the same thing all the time and it gets so boring and I get so sick of all of it. Well, I was just mentioning if you like this, it could save you one dish at Thanksgiving. Yeah. Put all together because we usually do both kinds of potatoes at Thanksgiving. Except don't do, do this at my house. No. <laughs> do, do you not? Um, I make yams. For, mm -hmm. with marshmallows on top, yeah. And I also made, we made a dish where we put like brown sugar and cinnamon and everything in it and it almost made like a dessert. Yeah, I made well, yeah that. you can feel yeah. the flavor. So I'm gonna put some cream cheese in mm -hmm. here. I mean, they're they're beautiful, right? I, this just I was the, just intrigued by this recipe, to be honest yeah. with you. Yeah, I'm not gonna put all of the, um, I don't wanna make it too soupy. I'm mm -hmm. not gonna put all of let me get it whipped up here. Yeah, let's get it really nice and fluffy and uh, make a lot of noise. Yeah, sorry, sound guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm just going to stir some bacon in there, which is really going to make it all better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Let me put bacon in. It's a very pretty color. It's very pretty. It's mm -hmm. very fall. 
which mm -hmm. I'm very much ready for. I'm, I'm so tired of this heat here in Florida. Okay, let me stir it up. Yes, yeah, speaking of, it's been unusually hot. <laughs> it's I'm, I'm so ready hot. to get the fall decorations yes. out okay. because that will make me feel cooler. There you go. Okay. We're going to be classy. You eat off a plate and not out of the bowl. Uh -huh. Okay, <laughs> okay. We'll take a bite. Yes. I like it. Do you taste the sweet potatoes? Not really. Do I believe you? Do you want you? to trust me? <laughs> no. Little, tiny. No, I don't trust Arthleen Rippy. I just want you all to know that. I am crushed. There's a hint of it, but not, not as bad not as bad. I thought it was going to be. And there's bacon, so. I, I tell you, I loved it <laughs> because I've uh, mentioned on this show so many times how I'm drawn to side dishes. Yeah, if you like Different sweet potatoes, dishes. you'll love this. Mm -hmm. It's really. Uh, the, the chicken broth. Uh, I'd probably add a little so, salt, maybe. Oh, I would. I think yeah, yeah, I need some, some salt and pepper. But it's called Creamy Double Mashed Potatoes. If you want this, uh, information's coming up on your screen. Get it the way that's most convenient for you. And after that, if you didn't hear Bob Hoskins on the last program, I think that you are going to really appreciate the portion of his ministry that we're talking about today. So stay with us. If you want the recipe, we'll get it to you. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Bob, as we continue this odyssey of your life, <laughs> Uh, there should be a big movie made out of it, really, but this will have to suffice till that happens. Uh, when we uh, left off on the last program, you had just reached that stage where you going in the ministry on your own now. Your family's somewhere else. You're six feet tall. You're not. Yeah. You're very young, but you're not that novelty anymore. And God had this wonderful plan for you for something completely different than preaching in American churches? Well, when we, yeah, when we were here last, I'd, uh, I'd been in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, by then, I'd, they'd quit calling me Little Bobby. Mm -hmm. I was Bob, yeah. Bob Hoskins. And uh, uh, God spoke to me to go to the country of British Guyana, which I didn't even know where it was. Long story, to make it short, uh, within a couple of months, I arrived with no ticket to come home and $5.68. And how old were you? Uh, I was 18, mm -hmm. and uh, God kept His promise to me. Uh, by the third night, we were out in the open air, and for the next several weeks, I preached to 30,000 people a day, and it was the planting of the Assembly of God Church in British Guyana, which, which uh, per uh, population-wise, has a higher percentage of Assemblies of God than any country in the world. Uh, That's kind of where it was born. And, 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 and from there, I continued on in, in, in overseas evangelism. Uh, spent uh, almost uh, two years in Africa, uh, and then uh, came back to the States, met my wonderful, well, you introduced, introduced me you. to my wonderful Hazel, and we began to travel then together internationally, back to South America, back to Africa, around the world. But along the way, I was nurturing a burden for the Muslim world of the Middle East. But backing up just a little bit, my viewers want to know, you really, your wife slept in a mud hut in Africa? Yeah, we, uh, you know. Yeah, most, like that's nothing? You know, most guys, uh, they, they, they get married and they take their wife, they borrow money to take her to the most expensive hotel, and from there on it's downhill. Uh, I, I decided I'd take her to a mud hut in Africa, <laughs> and everything will be up from there. It would. And it worked that way. And boy, she'd go anywhere. She would. With you, and such a such a prayer warrior. You were in my wedding and I was in your wedding. That's right. and it's uh, really, the, my sister and I have talked a lot about friendships that have a lot of history. They're, they're, they're the best. Okay, now, Beirut, I think anybody that has watched TV for the last 20, 30 years know that that's a very unsettled place, place. not where you would probably, your first choice would be take your family there, but you did. Well, actually, when we went to Lebanon, it was a paradise. Uh, Wasn't as it I called the gym of the Mediterranean? Yeah, I, 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 as I said, I was nurse, nurturing this burden for the Muslim world and uh, felt 
okay, I need to do so respond to it. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I held a crusade in Beirut, and I had an opportunity to do uh, a weekly television show. So I came back to the States, raised the funds, itinerated to go to Beirut to launch this television ministry. Well, you know, the first, show, the first program went on the air. And in a, a society where you've got Maronite Catholics, uh, Roman Catholics, Greek Catholics, Shiite Muslims, uh, uh, and, and on and on and on it goes, there was an uproar. How can you put religion on television? And first program canceled. Now, I built my whole ministry to right. come there and do television. And, and uh, so then I am fasting, praying, God, why did you bring me here? Because I'm a crusade evangelist. And you don't do that in Saudi Arabia and the places that I wanted to reach. Uh, so there were frustrating months. Why did you bring me here? But living among the Muslims, I, I began to study the Quran, and I found Jesus in the Quran. And so I said, what if I take Jesus from the Quran and sort of repackage and reintroduce him? And I created some simple literature pieces, which I hoped I could get through the mail. And uh, we launched what became a, a correspondence ministry, and within 10 years, I had 400,000 people studying God's Word in 26 countries. Interesting. You went over there because of the TV con yeah, and, yeah. and it, it bombed. You couldn't, couldn't do it. And um, I, I kind of remember that time. In and Hayes I would have never have thought of going there for a literature ministry. I'm a crusade evangelist. You know, I get yeah. up and preach. But. Well, I, I want to backtrack a little bit. You, you said when you first went there, you, you held a crusade. Yeah. But uh, not when I first went there, the year before. Okay. I, I went there to see what's the possibility. Well, what kind of a crusade do you have in the Middle East? I mean, well, you go Beirut, to Africa and Beirut, you have all these yeah, people. No, but in Beirut, you know, you have a uh, Christian community. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so we rented what was mm -hmm. called the Gulbenkian Auditorium. Mm -hmm. It was not a huge crusade. I suppose our biggest crowd was probably 800 people, uh, mm -hmm. which compared to, you know, thousands right. in Africa. But I felt... It was of God because I secured this TV contract, and, mm -hmm. and, and that's what brought me back. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I would have probably have said, no, this is not the place for me. That's not the first time God has taken a servant yeah, within a boom, yeah. bomb. <laughs> yeah. I'm writing a book now, I, I, for better word, I'm calling it Finding the Message in the Mess, mm -hmm. and that's what I did. I found my calling to media ministry through the mess of a canceled TV mm -hmm. show. Now, as this... Um, evangelism through the mail uh, began, that went into a lot of other Middle East countries. countries yeah. 26 countries, yeah. Some and, of and, them and, and then I, I followed that up with what I call the cassette church. Uh, and we, we started putting Bible studies and discipleship materials on cassettes. And people that would send us testimony of conversion from a place like Iraq or, or Algeria, uh, we would correspond with them. And when we felt comfortable, we would send them the cassette and say, if you can gather some people to share this with, and, and, and that's how we began planting churches. But wasn't some of that like you had to mail it in a brown paper bag or something? Oh, oh we, we had multiple uh, methods of, of packaging it, yeah. because we couldn't send the same letterhead to the same address, you know, one subsequently because p someone would become suspicious. And so we had a multiplicity of uh, packaging uh, uh, ways of doing it. Because if they had found out this was a Christian organization sending this literature out, what would have happened? Well, nothing would have happened to us in Lebanon, but it would have been the repercussion for the people at the other end who were receiving the literature. That would have been the repercussion. Mm -hmm. Now, did you go into Iraq? I did. You know, I said I, we started the cassette churches, and uh, we began to f get reports about groups of bodies of believers that are that are forming around the cassette church, and I thought, well, I need to go visit some of them. And so uh, I made this, uh, I decided to go to Iraq, uh, up in the northern part uh, uh, of Iraq, in, uh, in Mosul, where we had a, a, a growing group of, of, of believers. Okay, was it not wise for an American to go there? Well, no, America had no uh, relationship at that time with the USA. Uh, I mean, Iraq had no uh, relationship. Uh, and, and, and so, uh, when I, a long story, but to make it short, uh, my colleague and I were seized by the authorities. We were accused of being agents of the CIA. We underwent intensive interrogation, and only by a miracle of God, because uh, a few weeks later they hung 16 people who had been accused of being CIA. 
and mm. by God's grace, we escaped. So when I got back to Beirut, I said, you know, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe instead of my going to them, I should bring them to me. And so I, I started a, a, a Bible college and began to invite these converts from these countries that felt called to ministry. And uh, that, the, the, the Bible seminary that I started still flourishes throughout I the know, Middle East I know, I kind of got a chill when I read about this theological seminary right in the middle of yeah. uh, the Middle East, yeah. which is so unstable. And we had students coming from Iraq, Iran, North Africa, uh, Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, among the students, the most notorious students we had was was uh, the, uh, uh, he, he was the uh, Archbishop of Nineveh. Uh, the Syriac uh, church is the oldest church in the world. And uh, they, had a, they had a large uh, body of, of ancient Christians in, in northern Iraq. And he was the uh, Archbishop of Nineveh. And uh, he was one that received our correspondence ministry and came to our school. And, um, and, 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 and when everything folded in Beirut, I had to move the school out of Beirut. I said, where will I take them? Well, we had an orphanage in Egypt called uh, Asut Orphanage. I said, I'll take them. Well, so I, 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 I load up boxes of books and uh, about 15 students and we fly to Egypt, we get to the airport, none of them have visas and the, <laughs> the people in immigration are you know, ready to send us all back. But the archbishop is with us. And by God's grace, he had worn his long robe and his, his cardinal's hat and his big gold cross. And that, by God's grace, the person in immigration was a Coptic. So he recognized him as, a, as, a, as an archbishop. And he began to make and exclaim over him. And the dean of our school, George Assad, said to the immigration, all of us are with him. This is the archbishop's <laughs> entourage. And they let all of us enter. That's awesome. Now things uh, <clears throat> things began to get unstable, and that's you know, putting it very mildly. Yes, very <laughs> mildly. Uh, uh, was a war breaking out because you got the family out of the Middle East before you left? Right? Well, we had you know we were in and out. Uh, you know you know Hazel very well. Uh, she's not easily pushed around. Yeah. Uh, we had uh, interesting through your sister-in-law. Uh, we had a run-in. She had Hazel had a run-in with the uh, with the one of the most uh, uh, evil uh, terrorist groups in the Middle East, and uh, from that moment they began to track us and threaten us. Uh, and several times the American Embassy t told my wife that she had to get out of the, out of the country. Uh, and, and once she took the children to Cyprus, and after three days she came back and said, I'd rather fight the terrorists than, work, than deal with three children in a hotel. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. But eventually, eventually uh, everything folded. We couldn't, we couldn't, the school couldn't operate, moved it to Egypt. The correspondence ministry couldn't operate. I moved that to Cyprus. And uh, in those last days, uh, we came under ferocious attack. Uh, and and, and, and I'm, I'm only alive by God's grace is, is all I can tell you right now. Um, but our amazingly whole, our, all... Our apartment of... was blown up. My car was uh, blown up. Uh, and, uh, m you know, by God's grace, we survived. Um, but the, the ministry still, you yeah. moved it and it's still... Well, the churches we'd planted there continued to flourish, even though many of them immigrated out of the country. And so we had, uh, we had young people that had been c converted in our ministry in Beirut that ended up in England and Australia and other countries planting churches. But uh, Praise uh, the Lord for yeah, that. Yeah, so, so the work continued mm. to go. Okay, now I want to ask you how this feels. I heard this story that the family was gone and were there commandos around your condo? Yeah, uh, so no, uh, I, I had gone back. Uh, I'd moved the family uh, to the States. And I went back uh, to discover that our uh, apartment had been broken into, uh, er everything of value had been taken out, uh, and uh, Hazel had a piano. And I said, they'll come back for the piano, so I'm going to get the piano out of here. So I, I got a couple of curtain movers to come and help me get the piano and took it to a fellow missionary's apartment where I was going to stay because I knew I couldn't stay in that apartment. They would come back for me. and. Uh, and our housekeeper, I, I brought her and another housekeeper from, from that uh, uh, building because they weren't safe there either. Mm -hmm. And we were staying in this missionary's uh, vacated apartment. And about seven in the evening, we, uh, we hear this, uh, 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 all this racket downstairs. Look out and see, there's this commando group. 
uh, two uh, jeep loads of them, and they jump out with their uh, weapons, and they they ran into the building. And I said to the to to the two uh, housekeeper ladies, uh, they followed me when I brought the piano here, and now that they've come, and they're gonna they're gonna take me. So I locked them in the bathroom, and I went to the door, so that they would take me immediately without finding out there were two ladies in there because that you know and, and I heard them coming up the steps and uh, I, I heard them yelling and shouting and, they, and then they came we were on the seventh floor it sounded like they came up to the fifth floor and then it got quiet very quiet and then I heard them going back down and so I ran over and looked out to see what was happening and they ran over to where the jeep and uh, another group of four or five of them they ran into the building, and I heard them coming up the steps. And again, I'm listening, and they get about the fifth floor. Everything gets quiet, and they down they go. And, and, and then they just raked the entire building with machine gun fire and left. And the next day, I asked the concierge who's supposed to be guarding <laughs> us, what happened? He said, these guys were crazy. I said, who do you want? They said, we know who we want. We know why we're here. And they ran up stairs, and then they came running out, and, and, and I don't know what happened. And, uh, I think it was the angel of the Lord. J. Robert Ashcroft, whom you know, uh, Dr. Ashcroft, he was with me in a conference in Egypt about uh, a month later, and he said, I, I guarantee you there was a seven and a half foot angel standing Amen. on that fifth floor with his flaming sword. And those guys ran out and said, hey, you go get him. And finally, <laughs> so I get back, I finally, and this is a long story of how we, I finally got out of Beirut with the housekeeper to save her life got to California where Hazel was. Uh, it was Christmas Eve. She didn't say hello. She didn't say Merry Christmas. The first thing she said when she met me at the, at the airport was, what was happening to you? And she named the day and the time. And I said, why? She's, yeah. She said, I was at the kitchen sink and I was overwhelmed with a grief I couldn't explain. And I began to travail for you. What was happening? And as we calculated the time, it was the exact moment those guys were running up the stairs with their machine guns that the Holy Spirit touched Hazel thousands of miles mm -hmm. away to intercede. I'm telling you, Arthurine, this is real. This is it's real stuff. absolutely real. And uh, you got out of there, and that um, was a time when the Lord it's going to introduce you to a whole nother ministry that is so thrilling. It gives me goosebumps yeah. to think about it. But um, I think people don't realize that there's a lot of places in the world where Christians are in danger. Oh, most of the world right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we talk about how we're persecuting America. Give me a break. You know, give oh, me please. a break. Yeah. Uh, persecution. Let me take you to northern Nigeria where Christians right. are being slaughtered. Let me take you to Burkina Faso where they're being killed every day. Uh, all, all around the world, there's an, uh, more martyrdom now than in the whole history of the church. Exactly right. Uh, but when you look back on those, uh, those few days, what are your thoughts? I mean, your car was bombed, your, your apartment, was, apartment bombed. was bombed, you kind of got your family out of the country and you got out. You ran right to the airport, didn't you, when you saw the coast was clear? No, it was hard to get out because I had to. I, I did not want to leave Therese, the housekeeper, there because she was from the seashells and she would have, she would have died. Mm -hmm. And so I went to the embassy to try to get them to give her a visa so I could bring her to America. And and the and the ambassador said, "What in the world are you doing here? Don't you know that they're out to kill you? Get out mm -hmm. of this country!" And I said, "I'm not leaving without Therese." Mm -hmm. And he said. We can't. I said, I'm not leaving without Therese. And so they gave this seashell lady a visa uh, to come to America. And then we, it, very perilously, we made our way outside of, of, of Beirut and got to Amman, Jordan. And then from Amman, we flew to Europe and from Europe back to where Hazel met us at the airport. Okay, friends, I don't know about you, but this is going to be continued tomorrow because in many ways you haven't heard anything yet. Um, that's why I wanted to bring it to you. You stay right there. I'll be right back. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support.
Well, I have feeling that a lot of the viewers like to know what's going on around the world for the cause of Christ. Now, you don't want to miss the next program. Bob is going to talk about the ministry he is in today, a ministry that he has founded. And you will be astounded when you hear about the numbers in that ministry. It's called One Hope, and it's a ministry to children around the world. Now, these kind of figures boggle my mind. Have you ever thought of getting the Word of God into the hands of one billion, five hundred million children? You're going to hear those kind of reports on the next program. I hope you, that you want, won't miss it. If you remember on the first program, Bob told the story of how <clears throat> he was given a vision, lasted for several hours, and uh, no one could deny that it was real, it was accurate. On this next program, I think he's going to tell us about how God gave him another vision where he saw the condition of the children around the world, and it was not a pretty picture. And that's where the One Hope ministry was born. All you mothers and grandmothers out there, I just don't want you to miss it. And please notice that when we have these programs streaming to you, there's a website there. And you can go uh, to that website and learn a lot more about this ministry today. And if the Lord puts it on your heart to give to that kind of ministry, the information will be there for you. But I remember growing up in church, you know, my dad was a minister and it was so thrilling when a missionary would come and they would bring artifacts from the nation where they ministered and they'd put them on the altar. And I remember as a little kid, you know, going up and down and looking at those things that I'd never ever seen before and try to imagine uh, what it would be like to be a missionary. Well, it's a lot different today. Thank God for airplanes that go around the world very quickly. There's a lot of short-term missions that you can take part in. Uh, both of my children and their families take part in short-term missionaries, mission efforts where they go and build houses and, and give out books and anything that that missionary uh, would, could be helped by them being there. A lot of ways, a lot of ways, and we'll be talking about that. But I just wanted to put a spotlight on this ministry. Uh, the Lord definitely encouraged me to do it. And so I don't want you to miss the next program. It's going to be very thrilling. Until that time, remember, friend, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.